morning. You know, in the last class, we discussed about these condensed explosives. which were derived from hydrocarbon based fuels. We found that either NO2 or ONO2 that means either nitrate or nitro compounds are added to these fuels and we formed let us say nitromethane, we formed nitroglycol, we formed nitroglycerine and also we, 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 we looked at PETN these were based on the alkanes. We found from cyclo compound we could form RDX and HMX. These were based on alkanes, these were based on cyclo compound and again from, from the aromatics we formed TNT, we formed tetral. We also formed two, two other substances and these two substances were picric acid and TA. TB. These were the different explosives which we formed from the organic which we called as organic explosives or rather derived from hydrocarbon which are essentially organic based fuels. You know the, the structure of these, these uh, condensed explosives was clear and we said we would study the other explosives based on inorganic compounds in the class today. When we say inorganic, you know instead of having to add NO2 or ONO2 to form the which form the oxidizer which combines with the fuel to give the explosive. In case of the inorganic compounds, we add substances like, like let us say NN3 which we call as Z radical. What is this Z radical? You know N3 is unstable. Supposing I have N, N, N over here, you know it, it, it cannot be very stable and the Z combines with let us say lead azide to form Pb, N32, maybe to form AgN3 and since the N3 compound namely the Z radical is not very stable. It, it sort of dissociates into let us say Pb plus 3 N2. Here you have maybe 2 Ag N3 forming 2 Ag plus again 3 N2. Therefore, it, it sort of decomposes and readily decomposes and even slight heating is sufficient to have compounds having azide maybe lead azide, silver azide and other azides to readily de decompose and readily give out heat and these become explosives. Therefore, explosives are based on azide. It is not only the azide radical, but also maybe the fulminate radical, CNO radical. You know when we say CNO fulminate radical, maybe with mercury you form CNO and this again dissociates, it is not a very stable radical and you have the fulminate radical and these fulminate radical you have mercury fulminate you have maybe lead CNO twice. You know these, these inorganic substances they, they sort of decompose fast and not even if you have slight impact or let us say friction, small amount of friction they readily decompose and they detonate sort of because they readily supply the energy and these are known as fulminate, fulminate radicals. We have mercury fulminate and lead fulminate. Well, there is still one more. You know, we, we kept talking of acetylene, you recall. You said triple bond acetylene. We said, well, acetylene is always not, not such a good gas. In the sense, you know, the triple bond is not that stable it had something like a positive heat of formation, it sort of decomposes fast, its energetic was more, its energetics was, was much higher like dp by dtm was higher. Therefore, you can make use of the acetylite radical. What is 
What is the acetylate radical? It is this one, namely the CC. To give you something like calcium acetylide, maybe other forms of acetylide like calcium acetylide, silver acetylide, and stuff like that, which again rapidly decompose, and these acetylides decompose even sometimes in presence of some particular, let us say, ultraviolet light, maybe in presence of some light impact. But impact is very uh, sensitive, that means these fulminate uh, inorganic uh, compounds, explosive compounds like mercury fulminate is very sensitive to impact. And in fact, a small amount of mercury fulminate when added to some non-sensitive compound and it can be made into something like crackers which if you throw on the wall, it explodes. These are known as percussion crackers. Even if you, know, you keep on accumulating silver fulminate one on top of the other, the very fact that you accumulate fulminate itself decomposes them or make, makes it decompose. Therefore, you have radicals like azide radical, maybe the fulminate radical, maybe the acetylide radical in presence of some of these metals, these form compounds which are known as inorganic. explosives. The question you will ask then is, see we, we talked in terms of these radicals which were based on inorganic substances, again metal to it, why not use the organic substances as radicals? It is possible for us to think in terms of both aliphatic, what did we say aliphatic were? We said well, you, you had hydrocarbons into aliphatic and aromatic substances. Well, in case of aliphatic, you have alkanes, alkenes, alkynes and alkadines and in case of uh, aromatic substances, you had the benzene, naphthalene and, uh, and the extension of that like uh, 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 let, let us say uh, uh, benzene, naphthalene and you could have three of these benzene rings to give anthracene and so on. It is also possible to form radicals from organic substances. Let us take one typical example. Let us take the aromatic compound. Let us take benzene. Well, benzene we said is something which has two alternate double bond with the hexagonal structure C6 over here, two double bonds. Now, what we do is we add NO2 to it. NO2, NO2, you had one more NO2 here, you had an oxygen, had an oxygen and a hydrogen. That means you replace 5 of the hydrogen, 2 of them by O and the remaining 3 by NO2 and, and this becomes what we call as stiffnate, stiffnate radical. You know, in this case, you know, the, the formula would therefore be C6. H 1 H over here, O 2, we have O and O 2 and NO 2 3. This becomes the stefnate radical and we could have let stefnate P B, then you have C 6 H O 2, NO 2 3 twice, let stefnate you could have silver stefnate A G into C 6 H O 2 NO 2. NO2 because uh, the valence of silver is 1. Therefore, you could have again inorganic compounds based on the stefnate radical. Therefore, compared to the organic explosives which consisted of maybe right from nitromethane to TATB through PETN, RDX, HMX, we talk in terms of the azides, namely maybe lead azide, maybe silver azide, we talk of fulminates like mercury fulminate. We talk in terms of acetylide, we talk in terms of stefnate like, like lead stefnate and these are all inorganic based explosives. You know when we, so far we, we can now close the chapter on, on the chemistry of explosives by saying, well an explosive substance could either come from the organic compound or 
from the inorganic compounds and the organic compounds which gave us this we have discussed it enough came from aliphatic compounds, cyclo compounds, cyclo aliphatic from the aromatics like TNT, tetral, picric acid, TATB and of course, tetral also. When we talk of inorganic compounds, we talk of azides, we talk in terms of fulminates, fulminate radicals, fulminate like mercury fulminate, fulminates, we talk of acetylates and maybe as an example of an organic, these were purely inorganic, maybe stephanate. Well, these are the different types of explosives. But all these explosives what we have studied are all compounds in that within a molecule you had both the azide radical and the lead azide, let us say lead over here. Within the molecule you had NO2 and the methane over here. That means these are all chemical compounds. But we also said an explosive could be a mixture like a mass of mass of let us say fuel and oxidizer together. Therefore, let us take a look at some typical substances which are not chemical compounds, but they are a um, 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 mass of a mixture and let us let us see how these could be formed. Let us go ahead and take a look at one or two substances. We have been looking at maybe the ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate when we saw was equal to NH4. NO3. Well, if I look at ammonium nitrate, well, N is neutral, that means N2 over here, 2N. I have 2, 4 of H, which can form 2 H2O, that means uh, 4 of H, 4 of H, it requires 2 oxygen. That means even if I form something like N2 plus 2 H2O out of this particular decomposition, I am left with half O2. That means, I could use ammonium nitrate as an oxidizer because it has excess oxygen. So, also if I look at KNO3, KNO3, well, I could form K2O and maybe the nitrogen is left out and then I still have 2 and half of O2. That means, I have 3O2, 3O2 means 3, 3, 3 by 2, that means 2 of oxygen is left therefore, one of oxygen molecule is left. Therefore, I am still rich in oxygen that means, KNO3 may be even, may be even sometimes better than NH4NO3 and in fact, I can use KNO3 which now has a lot of oxygen in it, two oxygen atoms compared to even ammonium nitrate which has this and you will recall in the explosion of the Texas city disaster wherein Ammonium nitrate was there in the hull of the ship, something like 7700 tons of it and, it and it exploded. What happened is you formed all these substances, heat got released and therefore, you had an explosion. That means, it is very oxygen rich substance. KNO3 is even richer and since KNO3 is rich as it is in oxygen, I can use it. I can use KNO3 plus I add carbon to it. I also add little bit of sulfur to it, maybe carbon in the solid form. I add sulfur again in the solid form, anyway KNO3 is a solid. I mix the three together and this mixture is what is known as a black powder. The composition of black powder is 75 percent, let me put it down below, 75 percent of KNO3, carbon is 15 percent and sulfur is 10 percent. This black powder is again an explosive substance and it is used for making the firecrackers. All the crackers we make is generally out of this black powder and therefore, it consists of KNO3 75 percent by weight, 15 percent carbon charcoal powder by weight and 10 percent of sulfur by weight. Therefore, what is going to be the chemical composition of this particular black powder? That means, it is again compared to a chemical compound, it is a mixture of these three substances as a, as, as, as a mass of a substance. Therefore, if I were to look at black powder and if I have to look at the chemical composition, well, 
What is the molar mass of KNO3? K has an atomic mass of 39, nitrogen has 14, O has 16, and therefore KNO3 is 39 plus 14 plus 16, these are 48. Molar mass comes out to be equal to 75, that is 75 gram per mole, that is the molar mass. 48 plus 14. Uh, 52, 62, 62 plus 39, no, it is 101. 16, 3 is 48, 52, 62, 62 plus 39 is 101 gram per mole. That is the molar mass of KNO3. Carbon has a molar mass of 12, sulfur has a molar mass of 32 gram per mole. Therefore, this particular composition I would like to convert it into a particular substance in terms of the molar masses because I, I, I would like to find out what are the products of combustion and what is the heat generated. Therefore, denoting that this is 101 and if I consider let us say 100 grams of this particular black powder. The number of moles of KNO3 in 100 grams is going to be 75 grams divided by 101, so many moles. I have something like 15 grams divided by 12, so many moles of carbon. I have sulfur which is uh, 10, 10 grams divided by 32, so many moles. And now if I put the mo molar composition over here, I have this gives me 0 0.743 moles of KNO3 plus 15 by 12 is 1.25 moles of carbon as a solid plus 10 by 32 is 0 0.33, 313 moles of sulfur as a solid and therefore, the chemical formula for this black powder will be 0 0.743 KNO3 plus 1.25 of carbon in solid form plus 0 0.313 of sulfur in the solid form. And if I, if I relate it to 1 mole of KNO3, I can write it as KNO3 plus 1.25 by 0.743 which, which gives me 1.69 carbon plus 0 0.312 by 0.743 which gives me something like 0 0.42 of sulphur. This is the composition of black powder by moles. Therefore, if I want to take a reaction of this particular black powder. I say well I have KNO3 plus 1.69 carbon plus I have 0 0.42 sulphur and I have to find out what are the products to find out what is the energetics of it. I can tell myself now I do not have any hydrogen here but I know K potassium is very reactive maybe it could form something like K2O and what I could form is I have 1 K here it is going to form half K2O. And then if, if it is going to combine here, I have 3 of the oxygen atoms out of which I have used 0.5 of the oxygen atom. Therefore, I am left with 2.5 of the oxygen atoms. And if I look at carbon over here, if it has to form CO2, I require 2 into 1.69 that is equal to 8, 6 to the 3, uh, 6 to the 12, 13 carry on 3.3 of all O atoms, but I have only 2.5. Therefore, this particular composition we find is fuel rich and therefore, I cannot form CO2 and what it can form is maybe it has to form CO. That means, I have 1.69 of CO which is possible, but if I form 1.69 of CO, I have 2.5 of oxygen which is still left for me and out of which I have 1.69 
of, of CO which is formed, I am left with something like 0 here 1, the, I have 6 eighths of 14, 0.81 which is still left and therefore, you know I can, I, I, I get some carbon dioxide which corresponds to 0 0.81 and 1.69 minus 0 0.81, 8, 8 are 16, 0 0.88, I have 0 0.88 of carbon monoxide plus of course, I have sulphur. You know therefore, I get products of combustion like this, I know the heat of formation of K2O, I know heat of formation of CO, I know heat of formation of CO2, sulphur is an element, I can find out the heat of this particular reaction and the heat generated by 1 gram or 1 kilogram of the black powder. If I take KT, KNO3, the the heat of formation of KNO3 is largely negative minus 495 kilojoule per mole and therefore, the energetic of this particular substance is not as high as we would like it to be because it is large and negative. But still, it has substantial energy release of the order of almost 2000 kilojoules per kilogram of the mixture and it is this black powder as I said which is used for making firecrackers. While discussing this, we also found that even this particular mixture what is used in practice consisting of 75 percent by mass of KNO3, something like you have 1.69 C which corresponds to 15 percent by mass of carbon and 10 percent by mass of sulphur, this is still fuel rich. And in general, if you were to see the whether the propellants what we have discussed so far including these compounds what we have discussed we should find out whether it is fuel rich, whether it is oxidizer rich and we know that the heat released is a maximum when completed com products of combustions are formed or when the composition is stoichiometric. Therefore, we would like to first debate whether the different compounds we have formed, let us say the organic explosives, maybe the inorganic explosives. And we just took an example of mixture of certain substances like we had KNO3 with uh, carbon and sulphur to come black powder we say is something like fuel rich. Let us take one more mixture. You know we could have ammonium nitrate which I just il illustrated a little later, ammonium nitrate. I can use it. See ammonium nitrate is an oxidizer. I can use, mix it with fuel oil like diesel or some heavy oil. And now, I get ammonium nitrate and fuel oil is known as ANFO. And this ANFO is again uh, 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 an explosive. Now, it consists of oil and crystal. It is a slurry explosive and it is used for blasting rocks. It has also been widely used by the terrorists for planting bombs, but that is something which we have to guard against. But anyway, ANFO is also an explosive. And the composition of ANFO is typically again fuel rich, we, we have something like almost like 90 percent by mass of ammonium nitrate and something like 10 percent of the fuel oil in ANFO. Well, these are the different types of explosives and we wanted to see how, how many of these explosives are fuel rich, whether it is stoichiometry, whether we can improve the quality of the explosive. Now, let us take, let us start again from the beginning. Let us take one or two examples. Let us take the example of nitromethane. If we take nitromethane, well, we are talking of CH3, NO2, this was the formula for nitromethane. Should we say this is fuel rich or is it oxygen rich or say oxidizer rich or is it stoichiometric? how do I decide on this? Immediately I tell myself, supposing completely oxidized products of combustion are going to be formed, I should be able to form from one atom of C, I should be able to form CO2. From the three atoms of hydrogen, I should be able to form three, that means one and half H2O, that means three of H with O and therefore, to form completely oxidized products of combustion in nitromethane, I should have had oxygen equal to 
2 plus 1 and half which is equal to 3.5 oxygen. But what I have is only 2 that means only 2 atom only 2 atoms of oxygen are available as compared to 3.5 required if I want to have completely products of combustion. That means for stoichiometric mixture of this particular composition well I should have uh, 3.5 atoms of oxygen but I have only 2 and therefore I can say in methane that is in 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 nitromethane I will have the the oxygen atoms are available is 2. If I wanted stoichiometry I should have had 3.5 therefore the oxygen index I can denote by a word zeta I say zeta is equal to available divided by stoichiometry and this 2 by 3.5 is something like 0 0.57. Therefore, we say that the that the nitromethane has oxygen deficiency that is it is fuel rich and the oxygen deficiency zeta is 2 by 3.5 which is 0 0.57. Let us take one more example such that the, the evaluation of zeta namely the available oxygen divided by the stoichiometric for that particular type of composition. If I were to put it again and call it by the term zeta, you know let us let us take a look at let us say nitroglycerine. Well nitroglycerine let us first write the formula it is equal to propane triol C3 H5 OH3 in which I have ONO2 3 propane OH3 is propane triol glycerine I remove the OH by ONO2 this becomes nitroglycerine and now I want to find out whether it is it is an oxidizer rich or fuel rich and therefore now I say for 3C I need to form 3CO2 that means 6O I have 5 of hydrogen atoms therefore I have 5 and half that means 2 and half of H2O that means I need C6 plus 2 and half that means I need 8 and half of O atoms to form completely oxidized products of combustion namely 3 CO2 plus 5 by 2 H2O. But what I have is 9 O atoms apparently I have more oxygen than what is required for stoichiometric combustion of this particular compound and therefore the zeta content that is the oxygen available is 9 to be able to form fully oxidized products I need 8 and therefore the, the zeta is equal to 9 by 8 point 9 by 8 which is equal to 1.06. Therefore, we find while nitroglycerine is oxygen rich with zeta of 1.06 the nitromethane is fuel rich by 0 0.57. And like this we will be able to calculate the, the amount of oxygen which is available in the different uh, explosives and let us see this on a slide. I show in this particular slide the value of the, the oxygen fraction zeta in maybe nitromethane we found it was 0 0.51, nitroglycerine we just said it is equal to something like 1.06. Well, if I have nitroglycol, it is exactly stoichiometric 1. Nitrocellulose is again fuel rich, that means the zeta value is 0 0.63. PETN, that is penta erythritol tetranitrate, has a value of 0 0.86, again fuel rich. The aliphatic cyclo compounds RDX and HMX has again 0 0.66. And when we look uh, when we look at the aromatic substances may be TNT, picric acid, tetral and, and TATB well it is all fuel rich. That means in general most, most of the condensed phase explosives these are where, where the hydrocarbon based uh, 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 or organic based uh, explosives generally it is fuel rich except for nitroglycerine which is oxygen rich. We also show in this particular uh, table the, the value of heat of formation and we find well heat of formation is generally negative. In case of nitroglycerine it is minus 380 which is large in negative. RDX and HMX has positive values of heat of formation which means 
they, they may tend to dissociate a little faster compared to these particular ones since it is positive heat of formation. But if you look at the heat of combustion per se, you find from this very, very, uh, very interesting type of data, you find see when you have uh, oxygen fraction of 1.06, that means it is slightly greater than stoichiometric, the heat of combustion is maximum. If you have the, if it is something like fuel rich 0.57, the heat of combustion is lower and if it is 0.63, it is lower 0.86, it is not as high as this. Therefore, we can say for this class of maybe the aliphatic compounds in this particular case, when we go towards stoichiometry, the heat of combustion slightly increases because when you have stoichiometry, you have 6.3, it is also near to stoichiometric maybe 7000, well it is fuel rich, well it has come down over here and therefore, we find that the heat of combustion for fuel rich substances is on the low side because incomplete products of combustion are formed. When you compare this with RDX and HMX, well these are fuel rich and again the heat of combustion is little lower 5600 and 5630 over here. Uh, but when you look at aromatic substances, in general for all aromatic substances, it is terribly fuel rich and the heat of combustion is also low. Therefore, let us take the two cases namely the aliphatic based uh, explosives and also the aromatic based explosives and plot let us say the heat of combustion as a function of the deficiency of oxygen which I show. You know, this shows in this I have also included the, the cyclo based explosives namely the cyclo uh, trimethylene, trinitramine, cyclo tetramethylene, tetranitramine that is a, a HMX uh, is over here, RDX is over here, PETN is over here, nitroglycerin is over here. As the oxygen content increases, well the heat of combustion increases, we are talking in terms of megajoules per kilogram. So, also if I, if I were to look at, uh, at the uh, aromatic compounds, well it, it is not, it does not increase so steeply, but there is a tendency to increase, you know which is very difficult to say whether it is increasing or not, but in general there seems to be a small increase with the oxygen concentration. But in the, in the, in the case of the previous one, wherein you talked in terms of aliphatic and cycloaliphatic substance as well, there is a perceptible increase. Therefore, because of this particular increase, there is a tendency and we will just consider this particular example on the board. You know, if I can make a, a fuel rich explosive, that means I, I take something like a, 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 an explosive like nitromethane, I take which I know has zeta we said is something like 0 0.67 which is oxygen deficient. I take something like nitroglycerin for which I have excess oxygen something like 1.06. Now, if I can combine nitromethane with nitroglycerin and now see nitroglycerin is a liquid, both are liquids and I form a slurry of both these things, something form a gel of this particular and this is known as something like a gelatin. You know it is a, it's a gel substance and it is much more energetic than nitromethane, nitromethane plus something like ammonium nitrate which is something like a liquid and a solid, something like a slurry type of an explosive. And therefore, the tendency is to use somewhat oxygen rich uh, uh, a mixture of fuel rich and oxidizer rich, increase the uh, oxygen content and make the particular explosive to be more energetic. And we do that by adding or uh, by adding maybe the oxygen rich substances like or oxygen rich explosives like nitroglycerin or adding something like ammonium nitrate or you had KNO3 to some, uh, uh, to, to some 
uh, fuel fuel rich explosives and form a slurry of the explosives and these these are also used for to create more energetic explosives having seen the role of maybe the the oxygen index in an explosive we also saw something like a, a mixture of uh, ammonium nitrate plus carbon plus sulfur giving you something like a black powder we also looked at slurry of of uh, ammonium nitrate and fuel oil which can be used let's now take a look at some of the characteristics of some other something like the inorganic explosives we have seen the energetics of the organic explosives let's take a look at the energetics of the inorganic explosives i show this in one of the slides here let, let let's try to get that going you know i think uh, this particular slide was what we basically saw on the board namely ammonium nitrate is oxygen rich and if you look at the the oxygen index of ammonium nitrate it is something like 1.5 let, let's let's derive this you know because this is basic to what we are trying to learn namely if i take a look at ammonium nitrate you know we said it could form something like k2o plus n2 half n2 half k2o plus you have something like oxygen which is left out and this is for kno3 if i look at ammonium nitrate nh4no3 i'm i'm looking at maybe the products could be something like h2o completely products of combustion are 2h2o and i have uh, 4h and 2o over here i'm left with an o i'm left with n2 therefore we find that well oxygen is in excess and the the oxygen what i have is 3 if i want to form completely products combustion i don't need o here what i need is 2 and therefore what is existing is 3 for stoichiometric combustion i need 2 and therefore the zeta for ammonium nitrate is 3 by 2 which is 1.5 therefore now i can combine this excess oxygen with something like a fuel oil i have anfo what is that is what is done the heat of formation of of uh, of the ammonium nitrate is of the order of minus 183 the energy released during decomposition of an is typically you have the products h2o n2o it is something like 4860 kg per per uh, kilojoules per kilogram therefore if i have nitro methane which we saw is fuel rich with uh, with a value of zeta namely the oxygen deficiency if it is one it is stoichiometric it's 0.57 it's fuel rich i make a slurry of solid suspension of ammonium nitrate in nitro methane which it is much more energetic and this slurry is sometimes used even for blasting and it has also been used as i said in some for some causing some heavier damage by blast waves well oxygen rich we already saw nitroglycerin to nitrocellulose we form a gel substance it is known as gelatin dynamite and when we talk of ammonium nitrate fuel oil we said 90% or 94% ammonium nitrate and 6% fuel oil is anfo which is again an explosive ammonium nitrate is oxygen rich fuel oil is just a fuel you combine them and form an explosive you know just like we increase the oxygen content it is also possible for us to include to increase the fuel content if we increase the fuel content well what is going to happen the the explosive is going to be less sensitive that is it is not going to be that energetic and what how do we how do you reduce the oxygen content by putting maybe some polymer in it like polymer could be nylon it could be some butadiene it could be any, any any of the polymer which we say and when we add polymer to an explosive we say we have plastic explosives these plastic explosives are very useful in that they are not very sensitive you have hmx and rdx and these you have the the substances known as maybe uh, 
plastic based explosives PBX that means you have PBX of HMX RDX and these are not very sensitive can be handled much more safely and the polymer bonded explosives polymer bonded explosives are less energetic and much safer to use. In fact, one of the polymers instead of using let us say HTPB hydroxy terminated polybutadiene or carboxy terminated polybutadiene or nylon or some other substance, the glycidyl azide polymer has more energy and it is much more promising to be used for the polymer based explosive. These plastic explosives or polymer based explosives find use in, in, the, in the military for, a, a, for inflicting damage. Right? Well, these are the types of explosives and you now coming back to the organic explosives like azides, fulminates, stefanites. You know what, what do we see? The heat of formation of these substances are quite positive that means they tend to blow up quite fast compared to stefanate which is large and negative. But we also see compared to something like 5000, 6000 kilojoules per kilogram for the organic base explosives. These are something like almost one third to one fourth the value. Lead azide has something like 1650 kilojoules per kilogram compared to something like almost 7000 kilojoules per kilogram. Mercury fulminate has 1755, lead stefanase has around 1800 kilojoules. That means the energy release in some of these compositions are quite small. Therefore, we find that well the, the inorganic explosives do not liberate that much of energy as the organic explosives, but we also told that the N3 radical, the CNO radical and when we talk of acetylide radical they are just waiting to go. That means their sensitivity or to get, to get an explosion started might be very much faster. We have to still consider that and that is something which we are still left to do uh, in this particular condensed explosives. Having seen all this, we can now summarize what little we learnt about explosives as being of organic base, inorganic base, slurry explosive consisting of solid and liquid explosive or ammonium nitrate and fuel oil. We talk of inorganic explosives considering that inorganic substances like ammonium nitrate and KNO3, KNO3 with carbon and sulfur could give you black powder. We have inorganic base substances, azides, fulminates, acetylides, stefanates. We had organic base and we have said enough of it namely the aliphatic and aromatic compounds consisting of nitromethane, nitroglycerine, PET and RDX, HMX. You have picric acid, trinitrotoluene, the tetral, this should have been YL and the TATB. These are the different types of explosives and we have seen their energy behavior, how to make it fuel rich. That means having polymer, polymer. Uh, we will we'll go back to that slide. We have something like a polymer bonded explosives or plastic explosives. We also said in terms of explosives having uh, more energy by making them ox oxygen rich. Right? Therefore, with this background maybe it is time to put the explosive characteristics together and that is what is shown in this, in this particular slide over here. In this slide shows you the aliphatic like some uh, I have nitromethane, nitroglycerin these are liquid explosives. We are talking in terms of straight chain paraffin coming from pentane that is uh, 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 PETN. We have paraffin based cyclo, cyclo based RDX HMX. Similarly, we have aromatic and also the inorganic substances and also slurry explosives like ANFO. If you look at the density content, well the densities are not widely varying for both the aliphatic as well as cyclo as well as aromatic. The densities are in the same ballpark number around 1500 to 1700 kilograms per meter cube. But if you look at the detonation velocity, you know this is where I, I have to spend a, a couple of minutes over here and what do we say? When we talk in terms of chapman juge detonation in solid explosive, well it is the same thing which we talk of. Maybe we talk in terms of uh, P, we talk in terms of 1 over rho. We say 
Well, this is the initial state of the explosive, unburned. We have something like a hugonium, which may be a different type of curve because this is something like a reaction hugonium. And to be able to get a chapman jugay detonation, well, I have to have a tangent to it. This becomes my chapman jugay velocity. And you know, we can always get the chapman jugay velocity by solving the reaction hugonio and the Rayleigh line. And we can determine the chapman jugay velocity. Once I know the chapman jugay velocity, we, we learnt in detonations how to calculate the pressure behind the detonation. We found out how to calculate the density behind the detonation. And this chapman jugay velocity of a detonation and the pressure are shown in this particular slide for the different substances. And we find that maybe the, the paraffin based cyclo substances and PETN have somewhat much higher values of chapman jugay velocity. And also the pressure behind the detonation is of the order of 300 to 400 times the initial pressure that is 300 times the atmospheric pressure. Here, here you have no 300 MPA, that means almost like 3000 times the ambient pressure. And when I talk of these liquid explosives, well, it is somewhat smaller. When we go to the aromatics like TNT, picric acid, tetral and TATB, the, the pressures are lower and also the detonation velocities are somewhat lower. Therefore, the maximum damage or the maximum detonation velocity and maximum pressure are obtained with RDX, HMX, PETN and these are the substances which generate lot of energy because of the fast detonation what is available. That means the Chapman jugay velocities are higher. When we go to inorganic substances, well the, the values of the detonation velocities are smaller and also that the detonation pressure is much lower. And if I go to the slurry explosive, well, the detonation velocity is almost similar to what we have for the inorganic explosives. But mind you, slurry is also inorganic, but the detonation pressures are very much lower. Therefore, we see that the chapman jugay velocities are a maximum with, with such type of maybe the cycloparaffin based substances, namely RDX and HMX, followed by maybe nitromethane, nitroglycol, followed by the aromatic substances followed by the inorganic substances. Well, the inorganic substances have much lower velocities, much lower pressure behind them. They cannot cause that much damage. But you know, one thing which we still have to see, because of the azide fulminate stefanate radicals being somewhat not that, that stable, they tend to get into a detonation much faster. And that is something we will have to characterize the, the the explosives for. Well, these are the different properties of, of the different types of explosives and to put things together, we tell ourselves, well, we looked at the different condensed explosives, both solid and liquid. We find, well, the, if the explosive is more, contains more relatively more amount of oxygen, it has more energy in it. We also looked at the CJ velocity for detonation. We find maybe RDX, HMX have a higher CJ velocity and higher pressure in the detonation. We also find, well, the aromatic substances like TNT, the, the tetral, picric acid have lower value of CJ velocity and also lower pressure. And similarly, the slurry propellants also have lower. But when we, when we looked at all these things, we found the inorganic substances, namely the azides, fulminates, the acetylides, have very much lower values of CJ velocity and also very much lower values of the pressure in the detonation, which is formed in solids. Now, when we talk of these solid explosives, you know, how do we initiate the explosion? Well, we have to form a shock wave in the solid. And this shock wave couples with the chemical reactions and this is what drives the detonation. That means a shock induces chemical reactions, chemical reactions coupled with the shock to form a detonation wave traveling with the CJ velocity. And this is the CJ velocity we are talking of. And in some substances, you know, the shock waves can be formed very readily. 
That means in the inorganic substances, a little bit of touch or a little bit of heat release is sufficient to start a shock wave. Therefore, most of the inorganic explosives which we dealt with are things which are very sensitive and such type of inorganic explosives in which a detonation can form very easily are known as primary explosives. They are primary, you know, anything can start. You know, you, you touch it, maybe heat release starts a shock wave and this shock wave combines with the heat behind it and it forms a detonation. Mind you, the pressure behind the detonation is still small, the velocity of detonation is still small, but it detonates very easily. When we talked of maybe RDX, HMX, they release a lot of energy, but to be able to initiate a detonation in it, I need to start with a strong shock. The strong shock will generate the chemical reactions and then it will drive a detonation. This detonation has a high speed, but then it, it generates a lot of heat and a high detonation velocity, but I primarily require a shock and this shock can be generated by a primary explosive. In other words, uh, explosives like RDX, HMX, nitroglycerin, maybe PETN are which what we call as secondary explosives or rather since they have high energy, it is also known as high explosives. Slurries of some substances like we say black powder, carbon, we have sulfur plus KNO3 cannot really initiate a detonation because even if I have a shock, it takes some time for the chemical heat to get liberated. The chemical reaction cannot couple with the shock and no detonation is possible. Such type of explosives are known as low explosives. Therefore, one way of classifying the explosive is as a primary explosive, a high explosive. The high explosive requires a primary explosive to start a shock and this shock can take, take it forward while a low explosive cannot detonate. It is just like wood which burns but which generates lot of energy is it. One way to be able to arrest a detonation, we said we talk in terms of a critical tube diameter. If the diameter of your explosive is less than a critical threshold, well the number of cells in the detonation are not sufficient to make it propagate fast. It can only go as a, something like a pseudo detonation or rather you know, there is relief, because of the relief there is expansion and this expansion cools it. Therefore, if ever we want to safely handle an uh, energetic substance, well, its diameter must be less than the critical diameter. Well, this is about what we learn in the area of condensed explosives. To summarize, again we say, well, the explosives could, could be something like we, we say, uh, 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 could be a straight chain type of explosive, maybe it could be a cycloparaffin based explosive, RDX, HMX, could be aromatic, aromatic based explosive, we talked of TNT, tretral, we talk of TATB and we have explosives with organic base. And just to finalize the picture, we tell ourselves to be able to start a detonation and most of the organic substances have high values of activation energy. and to, and unless we have high activation energy, I cannot get an induction time and a spurt in energy release and this is what really causes an explosive energy release and therefore, maybe most of the explosives are associated with high activation energies and you get explosive damage because of this spurt in the reaction. It is also possible theoretically to be able to shear off the radicals and when you shear off the radicals, you start the chain reactions. And in this way, you can also initiate a reaction. But we must remember there is a critical diameter to a solid explosive below which it cannot propagate a detonation. Well, to summarize the characteristics of explosives, we say well, a low explosive like something like black powder does not detonate, it can only burn. A primary explosive such as the inorganic explosives comprising of azides, comprising of acetylides, comprising of fulminates, it detonates rapidly but does not generate much energy, whereas the high explosives or secondary explosives generate lot of energy, but it requires a strong shock to detonate. Well, this is all about condensed explosives and maybe in the next class, we will take a look at, at uh, let us say the TNT equivalent. Suppose some explosion occurs in nature, 
how do you say what is the energy of this particular explosion or the TNT equivalence? Well, thank you.